Welcome, people of Instagram, to Doc Talks, Doc Talks, episode four. Four. With myself, Dr. Zach Couples, and the one and only. And I'm Dr. Booth. And today we got some fun stuff we're talking about today. If, if you get up from a chair, it's like, oh my gosh, my knee hurts, or you have a hard time squatting, anything like that, this is the one you got to listen to. Is it? So we're going to talk about why do you hurt when you stand up. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a good topic. We have a lot of patients that will come in, and that's usually something that they'll say is when they have been seated or they're going, they're rising themselves out, out of a chair, that's when it typically uh, gets ouchy in the knees. So uh, we want to, we're going to roll through a couple of the common topics, um, but we're going to look at the common things that we hear from uh, patients in terms of like a medical diagnosis. Uh, so a medical diagnosis would be uh, tendonitis. Um, typically, they'll, they'll say it's like a jumper's knee or something like that. Those are, those are typical knee issues. It doesn't really help us, again, when we're looking at a medical diagnosis compared to a functional diagnosis. Um, those types of things don't usually help us all that much unless it's something really significant. You know, they've had an a, a actual knee surgery where they've had, like, cleaning done or they've had a, a full knee replacement um, yes we need to know those things but um, the things that are uh, like jumpers knee and tendonitis uh, we need to dive a little bit deeper into those things you could even say the same too if someone's been diagnosed with knee arthritis or osteoarthritis because a lot of times you can have people who have arthritis but don't necessarily have clinical manifestations that would lead to us thinking eh, this is something we can't help there's a certain portion of the population who has changes in their knee who are asymptomatic. And unless you have some findings, which we'll talk about later, that correspond with knee osteoarthritis, a lot of times that's not even that big of an issue. That's where a lot of the functional diagnosis, noses, as we'll dive into, becomes more important. When we are looking at things that are very significant, we have a couple of uh, red flags that we need to make sure that we understand on the front end if that needs to if you need to go see a doc these are the things that you should probably look for um, so when we look at a mechanism of injury meaning how did this actually happen if you're snowboarding and you fell and now your knee is pointing that way instead of straight not good like we need to go see a doctor so mechanism of injury if there was an acute trauma something that you fell and you slipped and you had you know now your knee is in excruciating pain Let's see if we can go get that uh, potentially looked at from a doc and see if uh, there's more evaluations or more treatment that needs to happen, but um, that's definitely a big one. Mechanism of injury, if it's traumatic um, and you have excruciating pain, go see someone that's going to be uh, on the medical, medical uh, team. Um, not us. We're, we're, we'll be secondary. We'll, we'll see you after they clear you. Other things that you want to take into consideration too with that mechanism of injury, if you also have swelling that's, that's prominent or it's red, anything like that, those would be other indications in which you need to seek medical attention. There's also some rules that we as clinicians operate by, by that let us know who we need to send to physicians for a more in-depth evaluation than not. And there's these rules that we have where if you have pain that is on the kneecap, directly on the kneecap, especially after a fall, if you are over the age of 55, or if you cannot put any weight through your leg, those are immediate referrals out. We don't want to see you yet. So please yet. go get yourself checked out. Yes, the key word is yet. We will help you eventually, but you have to make sure that there's no major structural issues that would warrant more treatments than what Dr. Booth and I can do. Yeah, and it's not that we don't want to, to see you on the front end of these things, but to be safe and make sure that you guys are uh, going in the right direction, make sure that that's, that it, the steps are made. Those, the, the, what he gave, um, those rules, they're, they're pretty easy, you know. The, the not being able to weight bear, pain directly on the kneecap, um, and then having an age that makes us a little bit more susceptible to susceptible to major injuries um, those are the things that you just want to make sure you look at first on the front end and uh, once we have that handled 
and then we'll figure out the next best step for you guys. Another one, this is a big one. Um, my knee pops is that bad. I think I get, I might find those. I can, sometimes I can get it to go on command. Uh, I couldn't get it uh, uh, right now, but. Uh, stage fright from your knee. Uh, I, I, maybe it'll <laughs> happen throughout the rest of the show. We'll see. Um, knee popping um, is that bad. So I guess it, it, it always kind of comes back to it depends. Um, so we got to have a little bit more context on the pop. So is the pop painful? And does it limit a lot of stuff that you can do? Or is that pop uh, reoccurring now um, after this injury? Those are things that we need to clarify to have a little bit more insight on whether that pop is bad or not. Most pops are usually not, not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Even if it hurts occasionally, that's okay. It's really the consistent, it pops and it hurts. And especially if it's in the same range of motion in your knee, that's when we start to get a little, you might need to get a little bit more in-depth um, workup. Otherwise though, if you have painless popping, that's typically totally fine. Even if you have popping that's associated sometimes with pain, more often than not, that's fine. You may have had that popping all along, but now because your knee hurts, you're just more aware of it. That's not uncommon whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Our bodies, when we're moving, have all of these tissues. You have joints, you have connective tissue, you have muscles, you have fascia, skin, all of this stuff. And it's encapsulated in fluid. And as you move, all these tissues are sliding and gliding one another. And think about how things sound when you move them in fluid. They make noise. And it's not uncommon for our bodies to also make noise. So if it's not pain consistently associated with popping, you're probably okay. You're just going to have a hard time sneaking up on anyone is all. Speaking of that, when I was in college, mm. we would be conditioning for football and my coach would always know where I was at on the field when we were doing conditioning because he could hear this pop in my ankle that was every step, like every <laughs> single step. So I totally get that. And I, I've always I asked trainers the same question. Hey, is this ankle that, that pops every single step, is this going to wear out at some point? And the, the truth is you don't really you, – you can't be uh, so finite in saying, yeah, it's going to wear out or it's not – or it is going to wear out or it's not. You know, you, you, have, a, you have to do a little bit more uh, – Mm -hmm. a little bit more history on some of that stuff but yep. um, thankfully it hasn't um, it still pops quite often but um, I'm yeah. still still functioning with it and no pain you just had to quit your career trajectory of being a secret agent as well Well, you know I was yeah the NFL <laughs> didn't want me because of the ankle it was just because of the ankle popping it was too loud um, mm -hmm. I couldn't sneak up on running backs but yep. it is what it is looking at movement restrictions that influence knee pain that's a that's a, a helpful thing for us to understand that the knee usually doesn't operate in isolation. Um, it's a, a relatively simple joint. Um, you know, there's, there's one kind of uh, axis of movement, but it also has some, a little bit of rotation, and Zach will go into a little bit of rotation uh, that happens at the knee when we're doing certain movements. Um, but in terms of comparing it to an ankle or to a hip, uh, it doesn't have as much range of motion as, as those, and hopefully it doesn't. If it does, Again, you should probably go see a, a different uh, doctor than uh, Zach and I. But our, our hips and our ankles, um, our torso, where those, where those are all positioned, they can play big, uh, they can be big players in the game for restricting how much the knee can actually move or how well it functions. Uh, so when we look at movement restrictions, um, looking at an ankle, having the amount of what's called dorsiflexion in the ankle is very important. Having the amount of range of motion in the in the hip is very important, so that we can get the knee to uh, be comfortable in its ranges of motion. So, if all of a sudden you you know start having stiffness, achiness in certain areas uh, around the knee, then the knee might try to start uh, building more movement than it should, and that gets stuff really really cranky really really quick. Anytime you have a loss of movement in anywhere in your body, it's going to change how you move and and. The knee, the knee is no different than any other area, just because of the influences that places like the hip and the ankle have on, on your knee. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you do what you can to restore the normal movement that should be available in those areas. And if you do that, more often than not, that will reduce the stress load on your knee, and it should make things like standing up much more comfortable. So let's go into our favorite exercises for you wonderful folks 
to improve knee, hip, ankle range of motion, make your knees feel more comfortable, and get you back to doing all the wild and crazy things you want to do. All right, so looking at, uh, we're going to look at a movement for hips to just to start exploring movements. We're going to look at a couple of uh, variations on how to do this movement, um, really restoring rotation and uh, in, uh, it's internal and external rotation. That's kind of medical terms, but just rotation in the hip. So you explore the hip, um, and then also something that we start loading up the knee a little bit, but hopefully in a pain-free manner, not um, not 100% pain-free when you're doing some of the exercises but we're trying to reduce that pain as we, go, as we go through more of this load pattern that we're gonna go through. If I have a patient that comes to me and they have this pain that is right at the knee, the bottom of their kneecap or somewhere below the kneecap, um, we typically look at that with a medical diagnosis of patellar tendonitis, um, but we need to start loading that tissue in a healthy manner quickly. We need to start to see if we can start getting that stuff more stimulus, but we just don't want to have so much uh, so much load where we start poking at it all the time. We don't want to keep picking the scab, right? Um, so easy ways to start doing that. I usually have a patient, if they're on a rolly chair or an office chair or something that could slide, I'll have them back up into something that won't slide. So the wall, uh, you know, they can have uh, someone help them just stabilize them so they can't actually push back. But my feet are on the ground. You can kind of see the feet down here a little bit. The feet are into the ground. I'm pushing my heels down to the ground. So what that is essentially doing, we're getting the quads, the muscles that attach to the kneecap, we're getting those to put stress on those areas that are painful. What does that do? That brings awareness to the area, brings blood flow to the area, brings the, the body's uh, ability to connect the, the quad contraction or the muscle contraction to the area of the knee. That's really good because we're, we're doing it hopefully in a less painful manner. So again, we're, I'm at 90 degrees here. I push back into the wall and I'm going to hold that for around 20 up to 40 seconds. And hopefully it's going to be a below a 3 out of 10 if we're looking to grade that pain. 10 being the worst pain, 3 is on the lower end of that scale. So if we can stay in that 3 range and we're uh, stressing the knee, that hopefully will decrease as we do more reps. So if we can do this 5 to 6 times, if you're just sitting at the desk, it probably should be pretty easy. You can still type away, you can do all that kind of stuff, but you're using those quads and you're stressing those tendons. That could be a really good way to modulate pain. Also, you can take your feet out and change the angle a little bit. So your feet don't have to be at 90. You can start at 90 and then start exploring different ranges there. After, we can look at uh, looking at the hip when we're talking about uh, creating rotations in the hip. Looking at a hip airplane, we're trying to let the body know where the ball and socket is of the hip. So letting the body know that the, the hip has this range of movement so that the knee doesn't have to start picking up some of that movement. So ball and socket, we're trying to get that to be as, moving, as, as able to move as possible. So I usually like to tell people, hands on your hips, let your hips and your shoulders work together, meaning they move at the same time, and then the knee just stays in the same spot. So knee stabilizing, good, and we're still doing a little bit of an isometric contraction on the, on the, iso, uh, or on the knee. So here, and then we're gonna turn away from the knee, turn away, Keep the knee in the same spot, squeeze and hold, and then coming back to that neutral. And even if we want, we can go to turning in and making my hips and shoulders turn towards making all those muscles around my hip work really, really hard. So if my hip is working hard, my knee doesn't have to be working really hard at this point, that's a good sign because we're creating stability, creating uh, a little bit more of the hip to be dynamic and help the knee out a little bit. So this is a hip airplane and then our ISOs, those are good for uh, helping the knee out a little bit if we're having pains there. As we talked about before briefly, but I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail. Your knee is not this hinge, right? It's not a door hinge. What your knee is, is it is a rotational piece of your body just like anywhere else in the human body. So as you bend and straighten your knee, there's certain rotations and twisting that occur. That's totally normal. What becomes an issue is if we have a loss of that normal twisting mechanism that should happen when you bend and straighten your knee. So I have two moves. If you have a limitation in bending or a limitation in straightening that you can use
to improve your knee range of motion and get you back into business. You'll want to try this move out. I'm going to have Kyle get in the hook line position. So what that is, is lying on your back, knees bent, and hopefully y'all will be able to see Kyle. What I want you to do is narrow your stance a little bit, if you could, please. Can't yep, get, right. Can't, we can't get these walls too dirty, though. Well, that's why I made you do it, because you own the place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what, what Kyle's going to do is you want to bring your knees in like so. So you want a straight line between your foot, knee, and hip. And the goal with this move is to work the hamstrings, a little bit of the glute. The way you'll do that is without rotating your hips in and out, you're going to curl your hips up while keeping your abs nice and relaxed. You can go up a little higher, Kyle, if you would like. And Kyle should start to feel a little something, something happening back here. Mm -hmm. If you're not, there's a nice little cue that I like. You can go ahead and drop down. Kyle, believe it or not, when you weren't looking, talk about clean walls, I put doggy do on your shoes. You want to try to scrape the doggy do off your shoes from Zeke. Oh, Zeke, my, my boy. Zeke is, Zeke is Dr. Booth's dog. He wouldn't do that to me, though. <laughs> Try to lift your hips up as high as you can. Perfect. So we should have the hams going like bacon. Mm -hmm. I want you to hold that position and then to work the ab muscles. And this is going to be important when we talk about squatting. You're going to take a few slow breaths in through your nose. Give me the longest exhale known to man that's going to kick in the ab muscles, which are important for creating some uh, stable platform form for your rotation action to occur at your hips and your knees. So I can't do what I was doing, that hip airplane, if I don't have something to stably work upon? I, I would argue yes. Yes. Yep, so this would be Tying a good precursor together. to do before you hit up the airplane. Tying it all together. Love yep. It. One more breath. And then when you inhale, make sure it's in through your nose. Perfect. And relax. And we'll have this in the show notes um, on our website. So if you want to review that activity again, please do so. That's if you have a straightening limitation. Mm -hmm. You can kick that up a notch, Emeril Lagasse style, by go ahead and curl up again. You can make this a single leg move. Go ahead and straighten your right leg in this case. So kick your knee straight, boom. Now I can work on straightening while incorporating the hip component He's going to feel a little bit of quad, but he's going to feel a lot of bit of hamstring on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. You can do the same breaths that we worked on with the last technique. All right. Does it matter if I have right-sided knee pain, which one I extend? I would do both sides. And the reason why you would do both sides is because the positioning of the hips is still emphasizing the straightening mechanics because there's certain rotations that have to occur at your hip when you straighten your knee that's going to be focused on at about 90 degrees of knee bend and with the leg straight. Now let's say that you can't get a full knee bend if you can't bend your knee. So this is where you can't get the heel to butt as opposed to the last one which was straightening, right? You're gonna then have this position where your feet are flat, lying on your back. You're gonna do the same tuck that you did for the knee straightening exercise. Go ahead and curl your hips up nice and easy. You should still get the same uh, hamstrings, maybe a little bit of glute. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring your knees in. You can see Kyle's eyes just went like this because it's pretty challenging. Bring your knees in a little bit more because you want them in that straight line. And you can do the same breathing. And just get a full exhale to ensure that you get the abs kicking in. Great job, Dr. Trying, trying for you. Now, if we really wanted to be mean, which I usually do, take this knee and bring it to your chest. This would be in a progression from the same activity. Go ahead and curl your hips a little bit more. Think about bringing your belt or your, your butt bone towards your knee. Curl it up. And I don't know if you can hear this on Instagram, folks, but if you hear this little pssst, that's because Kyle's left glute is sizzling. Sizzle. Bring your knee to your chest a little more. <laughs> and exhale. There. Great way to improve your knee bending capabilities. Money. So 
you need to straighten your knee better, feet on the wall. If you need to bend your knee better, feet on the ground. Typically, people want to know what they can and can't do uh, once they are leaving our office. So what, what should they avoid while their tissues are healing and become like, becoming less sensitive? That's really big for us to go over. Um, one thing that commonly comes up is how to go up and down stairs. Um, Zach has a really good uh, focus or concept of making sure that you feel your heels on each step. So whether you're going up or down stairs, try to make sure that the weight that you're putting down into that step goes in your heels. You'd be amazed at how often people do not do that just when you're not thinking and going up the stairs. And normally, we wouldn't want you to think about that, but if your knee is already hurting, it's just a great way to change the context of the movement, one. And two, getting a little bit more heel contact when you push off the stairs is going to help recruit the hip muscles a little bit more, yeah. which should reduce the stress load on your knee. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, something that I use with patients also is trying to lead with the non-painful knee. Now, if we're having both knees, it's kind of a bummer. You know, this one doesn't really work for you. But if you have single-sided knee pain and you're leading with that leg it puts it into maybe a little bit more of a threat threatening state to you you're like oh i don't know if i can really do this lead with the opposite leg have your base of stability kind of underneath you a little bit more um, and reach with the non-painful leg uh, as you're going through some of those uh, movements i think it can definitely help lessen the stress on you mentally um, but also give you a little bit more uh, stability because your weight's over over uh, your center of mass a little bit better now, if you do have knee pain on both sides and you still want to do some type of activity modification while you're walking or something like that to make things a little bit more comfortable, remember, as we talked about before, the knee should rotate as you bend and straighten. So anything you can do that drives rotation while you're moving is useful. A nice cue that I like, which will, will piggyback off of what Kyle's saying, is just simply increase your arm swing when you're walking. So. Make it exaggerated. Throw your arm out a little bit more in front of you. Pretend you're John Wayne, like hell I am. Walking forward, back and forth. And a lot of times that can help influence and improve the rotational actions that you have available in your body and can reduce the stress load on your knee. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be this you know, big lunge step or something that's ca causing the knee to have a lot of bend. You start in increasing that rotation in a small manner first and then you start building it a little bit more and more. So that's a great, really good point. All right, we're gonna move into squat, um, oh. getting a little bit more in depth on uh, squatting mechanics, and then also maybe some things to start thinking about conceptually on how to make your squat a little bit better, taking some of the pressures off your knee. Um, when, I, when I look at a patient that is having problems squatting, we obviously look at the squat. That'd be crazy to not actually look at the squat. So uh, I've had a lot of people say over time, my feet are going to go forward when I squat and they're going to stay forward the entire time that I squat. Um, after we've looked at anatomy for a long time, we know that all bodies are different. They're going to be way, way different. Mine's way different than Zach's. Zach's is way different than anybody else that walks through the door. So we can't have a golden rule of your feet have to be you know, parallel to each other the whole time or they have to be out or they have to be in. There's no rule that's, that's gonna help every single person. It's more concept. So start thinking of feet width and then foot position so that it can help what's going on up the rest of the chain. So your av availability as a narrow squat, all the way out to a wide squat. So wherever your feet land and you test, does that make your squat feel better when you're down in this position? Or does it make it feel better when you're in this position? Everyone has their best way to squat. And then there's also foot position. So if my foot is turned outward when I'm on the ground, or when my feet are on the ground, and I feel better in a squat with my feet outward because it makes my knee track better or my hip work better, whatever it is, that's your squat. If, it's, if it does stay parallel, great. The, the people that told you that were actually right, but they're only right this one time. It's not a golden rule for everyone. So foot width position, foot position in terms of rotation, internal or external, those are gonna be really good keys for 
imp improving your squat and figuring out your squat. The range of motion when you're squatting or bending your knee in terms of when it's most stressful to the knee joint is at about 90 degrees, which is your classic parallel squat, right about there. And a lot of times if you have restrictions in your squat mobility, that may mean or that may indicate that you get some of those compressive forces a little bit earlier in the range. And think about what started this whole doc talk. It hurts when I stand up. Well, most chairs when you stand up are at that 90 degree bend. Your hips and your knees are even. So if we can improve your squat range of motion and change the way you're squatting a little bit, a lot of times that can reduce the stress imparted on the knee when you're getting up and down off of chairs or out of a squat. A drill that I like is squatting, but there's a few key differences that I coach a lot of my people with when we're talking about the squat. What you'll need if you wanna do this at home is a weight, and ideally something that's ramped. A book works great. You'll just put your heels on the book. If you don't have access to that, in the show notes, I will link, or if you check, it up, check out us out on Instagram, you'll see a squat post that I did for tight calves. The mechanics are exactly the same, and that's a great move that you can do at home. So peep our Instagram story and channel to see what that looks like. But if you want to get a good squat, get yourself on a ramp, with a squat, you want the hips to go straight up and down. You don't want to shoot your hips back necessarily. That's more like a deadlift. With this, in order to improve the range of motion, we, the goal is to get your, your tailbone towards your heels. So the way you'll do that is by grabbing a weight, hold the weight out in front of you to act as a counterbalance. So you're going to shoot this forward, and my body is going to shift backwards. Not like this, my whole body shifts backwards. Weights on my heels. From here, you wanna tuck your hips, just like we did with that hook lying and wall move. So stick your butt out, get your belt buckle underneath you. From there, you're gonna keep weight on your heels, push your knees forward. Go to a point that's comfortable where you feel the quads and your glutes working really hard. You shouldn't have any knee discomfort. Hold that, you can breathe in that position, or you can simply work that range until you feel comfortable going all the way down and coming back up. If you get any knee discomfort during the move, more often than not, the way people mess that up is by losing heel contact on the way down. Just like we talked about with the stairs, heel contact increases the amount of workload that we have through the glutes, reduces the stress on the knee. Same thing with the squat. If your heels are coming up or your toes are rotating out as you drop down, you want to reestablish heel contact, get your tuck, and go up and down. Hopefully have your quads feel amazing. Mm. Hopefully you guys learned a couple of things. Um, we have to get back to treating some patients and doing all the stuff that we talked about here um, with live, the live folks that are coming in to see us. Um, we appreciate, appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, to come and learn with us and next week we will be talking about a little bit of golf swing you know people are, are getting back out to the golf courses uh, and they're hurting themselves so we need to figure out ways to help them so listen in next week for a little bit more golf talk on doc talks yep and if if you want to learn more or you want to work with us check us out at elevatevegas.com especially if you are in the las vegas area um, we are seeing patients, so don't hesitate to reach out, especially if you're having some knee trouble and you try this stuff and it's getting better, but you want to be a little bit more specific to you, give us a call. And we're also seeing people remotely, so you can stay safe during these times. So Crazy please times. check us out. Crazy times indeed. All right. See you guys. Have Take a great care. day.